I do start seeing you checking in. If I'm checking in, it must be Wednesday. Blue Plate Special Day. Today, this is going to be a very simple lunch that I'm making. And it's not really any super recipe for this. But I will explain what I'm going to be doing here. Because this is basically going to be a completely outside of cooking the pork chop. Um, be a completely microwaved and pressure cooked meal today. So that's the plan. So that's the, um, pretty much the reason why I'm, I'm doing this. And then showing off my good old microwave pressure cookers. They work pretty good. But there is one thing I will explain. All right. In this one, I have a 20 ounce which is a package of butternut squash, frozen butternut squash, to which I've added a half a cup of dried cranberries, one teaspoon of brown sugar, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon that's going to cook in with that when I put it in the microwave. That one's going to go in to be cooked first because it's frozen for the most part. So that'll take longer. The other, the other pressure cooker has my potatoes in it. There's four cups of potatoes in there. Pretty much the water's all drained. There's no water in there except for the, what was on the potatoes. You, I usually soak them and then I'll put them in and drain the water out. There is four tablespoons of butter on top of them potatoes so when they're cooked. So what I'll be doing <coughs> And oh, also in this broccoli, the broccoli will be the last thing to go in that takes about probably three, and a, three to three and a half, four minutes at the most in the microwave. And that has like about a teaspoon of water in the bottom of the container. That's all you need. Once it gets in there, it starts steaming up. The, the broccoli cooks just like that and it comes out really good. So that's the story on that. And uh, to go with the pork chops, I have couple little containers of applesauce. I don't know if my friend likes applesauce with his pork chops, but I do like with pork. I like applesauce, and what I'll do is I'll cut up a little chunk of pork, dip it in the applesauce, and okay, I know. <laughs> it's just me. But anyways, I enjoy eating it that way. So that's what we're going to start doing. I'm going to take and uh, put the pressure cooker in the microwave. This is the one that has the frozen stuff, so it's going to take considerably longer. It has a little push-up button. I know when the pressure comes up because that thing's little yellow button pops up. So we're going to start with about 10 minutes on that. Oh, hang on. Cancel. Try that again. All right. Now we're on, team, on, on the beam, as it were. So I will be shutting off for now while that cooks and be back on when it's time to swap over to the taters. Well, I'm back on. I put the, originally put the squash in for 10 minutes and I decided to give it an extra five and hope for the best here so because it was frozen. So we're just waiting for it to go beep. Exactly what I wanted that to do. But it got caught and it popped. But anyways, that should be cooked. It'll stay hot for quite a while. It's still plenty hot at lunchtime, which is at 11 o'clock. Alrighty now, I'm back. I a little forgot I had the TV on. I don't like the noise in the background along in my video. So the potatoes are in. It's exactly 11 o'clock. I'm going to put the cook time for same as I did for the other one, 10. Alright, and I suspect that 10 minutes will probably be pretty good on the potatoes. Is that the last thing, whoop, probably out of camera view, the last thing that's going to go in is the broccoli. 
and when it's all cooked that's ready to go that's when I'm gonna hit the pork chops so I'll avoid you signing off for a little while longer let them taters cook well I'm back again see if I can get this one out of here without me popping off the lid Lose the pressure because it'll keep cooking. Okay, I gave the. Sheesh! Woo! You like that, huh? Alright. Potatoes that come out there cooked. Squash should be cooked. Good Lord willing. It's 11 13, so we're going to be on standby for a little while. I'm not going to open those up until just about eating time. I said the broccoli will take approximately three to four minutes to cook so that's going to go in at the very last minute so it's nice and warm and freshly cooked. So my pan has already been lubricated with a little bit of olive oil. That's it, just a little bit of oil, olive oil on the bottom. When time comes I'm going to heat this up. Then pork chops are going to go in, them chops are going to go in there, or cutlets I should say. I can call them pork chops. They're, veal, they're pork cutlets. They're going to be going in real quick, a quick on one side, quick on the other side, and when they get to a safe temp, they're coming out because they cook real quick. So, Lloyd Blue South Senior checking out until just about lunchtime. Well, I'm back. I just started the skillet on low just to get it warmed up. Uh, I have a squash right here. Smoosh it up. Mix the cranberries in. Now it's not going to be completely just broken up. I'm just trying to get it so that the nice mix with the cranberries. I'll just serve it right out of here. Lunch time. Taters. I have to work them over. So the deal is with the potatoes, I've already shook this can up. And I'm gonna add a little bit in here if I can get the cover open. Oh golly, there we go. And it's eyeballing this. And I'll see how the potatoes break up. may have to use my potato masher on them. They seem to be breaking up reasonably well. I'm going to stand by one. Nobody go away. sour cream after about a oh, less than a quarter of the container to worth that I'm going to add to my potatoes here. This is the last of this container and yeah, sour cream goes nice in mashed potatoes. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Ah, come on. To be difficult, but uh, there we go. One more squish to go here. That's about it. All right, I'm going to be mixing that in. Oh, golly. I'm going to whip the much of it that I can. Now it's not going to be completely smooshed. It's going to be sort of nice. Oh yes, it's coming good here. 
Hope I don't sound too excited here. Oh yeah, it's thickening up beautifully. We are there. Oh, save them skins. Mashed potatoes are ready for lunch. Cover on there. 11.43, sounds pretty good. We're gonna put the broccoli in the micro zapper. We got a pretty good bunch in there, so I'm gonna go. Three minutes and 30 seconds. My frying pan is coming up. I don't have it up to temperature yet. Evaporated milk out of the way. Okay. We'll be turning the camera off just for a little bit here. Little quick catch me up. The broccoli is done. Perfect at three and a half minutes. It'll stay there. It'll stay nice and warm. We're at about 11:48, so we're running pretty much on time. And I'm gonna wait pretty much till I guess the water comes in before I throw the pork chops on. Because, like I said, they are not going to take long, and uh, they're a lot better when they're cooked just right and not cooked till they're dry. Boy, do so, senior, checking out. All right, we're there, 11:57. I'm going to be putting the pork chops on here, and like I said, the heat's been down. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. And when they are done, they're going to go, each one of us is going to get one and two of them are going to be put off to the side for later consumption, most likely, by uh, yours truly. All right, I'm get that heat up. Um, for any kind of luck, if I don't turn this vent fan on, and even with that on, the live will have my fire smoke alarm take off. Alright. Um. Believe me, this is not going to take long. <laughs> The nice thing about pork nowadays, well, either nice or not nice, is the pork industry gives enough antibiotics to the critters that chances of it catching something from, from pork are pretty slim to none. Alrighty now. 
should be just about there or if not beyond there. I don't want them to go beyond there, so we're going to call it there. So we have one for me, one for Paul, and two for later. How about that, huh? Now, if I can get these covers off, we can do some serving here. I don't know how the camera's angling at me. Maybe we got away with this. I can turn that noisemaker off. There, we'll hope. Okay. Let me get into the goodies here. Okay, here we have the butternut squash with the cranberries. All right. A little bit more of that, not much. And in this corner, we have my. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous, at least in my eyes, potatoes. All right, and I should have moved those a little bit differently, but Paul will forgive me, I'm sure. I got a little room here. Get that cover off. Got some sprigs of broccoli to put on the edge. Come on, kids, out of there. No, no fighting. And Paul can always come back for more, that's for sure. Okay, there's Paul's plate, guest of honor, and I'm going to be turning off the camera and making mine, and we're going to have some lunch. Well, I'm back. We've had lunch. I have two nice pieces of meat for a later consumption by yours truly. The... Uh, Meat came out just right. It was not overcooked. It was just where we wanted it. And as you can see, we are two good boys and we've cleaned our plates up. The smashed potatoes were delicious. And anybody out there will give you, tell you if you really ought to try the butternut squash with a little bit of cranberries in it, like I gave off, like I used today, I think you will find it delicious. So, Lloyd Dussault Sr. is going to be closing out today's, and Paul and I are going to have a little bit of ice cream off camera. Take care, everyone.